Hi, I'm Neil Barker and welcome to my guide on complete strip and reassembly of the iPhone 4. Right, first we go, we start off with our iPhone 4, nice little carbon sticker on the rear there, but uh, apart from that, standard iPhone 4. Um, first thing we come across, obviously, are the little two screws in the bottom. Now the earlier models of the iPhone 4, um, they have the crosshead screwdrivers and the screws in, and that's what we've got here. Um, but the later iPhone 4, and now the iPhone 4S, have the Torx, the sort of the five star, um, the five star screws. So what we can do, I mean ours is the Philips, so we sell all the tools on our website. Um, so we've got the, the sort of the standard Torx, just like the one or two use only ones, and we've got the professional Torx screwdrivers that you can use a lot if you're a repairer or you want to do it more often. And um, obviously these, we've got small Philips screwdrivers as well. Um, the crosshead type. Um, so we remove these two bottom screws and they lift out like so. Um, dead easy to get into, um, but obviously, as you remember, you know, if you've got the torque screws or the Phillips, then get the, the tool to suit. Um, but we do emphasize that on our site. So, right, once that's out, it's dead easy to uh, do. You've got the rear casing, you've got the two screws out there. We're just going to put the thumb on the back, we're just going to push it towards the top. There we go. Comes up by about three or four mil at the top, goes that way, and then what we're looking to do then. Is just literally lift it this end and it should come off like so. So there you go, there's the uh, rear casing of the iPhone 4 off. There we go, it exposes the internals of the iPhone 4. Obviously, it must, it must insist that you turn the whole thing off first before you do anything else um, and you run the sort of the, uh, the standard anti static uh, requirements before you do it. Because if you put your fingers in there and you've got static, you're going to damage it. So we'll put the parts to one side, but that's the rear casing off. So if you're replacing the rear casing, that's it, simple as that. You get the new rear casing. You slide it on and then away you go. I like to use these little trays um, because the screws are so many different sizes um, that you know I, I put them in the compartments as we go and it's so much easier. So there's the iPhone 4, of course you've got the battery there, the camera and all the sort of the innards and there. So we, first we can start taking out the, all of the parts inside. Um, we can remove the battery first. The battery connector here um, has a small crosshead Phillips screwdriver screw there so we're going to remove that. Um, so that screw comes out like that, I'm going to pop it in that compartment and obviously the battery will come out now. So if the battery's never been out before, they're pretty tricky um, and a lot of people make this error of actually tearing the battery connector off the board we've noticed, so be really careful. You're looking to get a little non-marking tool, hook it under this little tab there, I don't know if you can see that, under the top edge there. Don't go too far in, you're just looking to just literally half a mil in and just flick the connector up and off like that. Um, any deeper you're into the plastic connector on the board and you ping the connector off the board it's going to need resoldering if you um, so it's a pain so the connector comes up and there you have this small bracket underneath um, which is used to I might have to leave the battery leave that in there to remove the battery but that that's clamps between the battery connector and the the board and clamps the little uh, aerial aerial plug down there uh, it looks like it's coming off so let's remove that um, so we can remove that little that little device there. That puts pressure on that little connector, stops the aerial socket from pinging off. Um, so that's the battery. Um, it's quite tricky. If you've never removed it off before, it's got a little tag here saying, you know, pull here, release the battery. Sometimes it's extremely hard, extremely well stuck down. Um, but this has been off before. So we know that a quick pull of that, that'll come off. Um, if all else fails, you get a little spudge at all. Um, little plastic spudger. Again, you can get all these tools from our sites and come in one side and just sort of pry it here um, up this side. Just be careful not to damage the battery because if you split the battery, then it's it's no good. So you're looking to lift the battery, maybe a little bit of warmth as well, but you don't want to heat the battery or the phone up too much. So battery comes out like there. Obviously, if you're replacing the battery, that's great. All you need to do then is slave the new battery in. There's little bits of sticky pads here that it'll stick down on. Uh, what I'd recommend is, is getting that bracket in first, push the connector on top, and then sit the battery in um, and then obviously put that screw in. So that's the battery out. That leaves you the board. Now if you're doing this full strip down you might as well remove this this because it just gets in the way on everything you're trying to do. That simply pulls off, leaves a bit of adhesive behind so you can just push it back down. That's that out of the way. Um, now we're into sort of more screws. So again all, all crosshead type screws. Uh, next thing we're going to do is remove the dot connector or at least partly, partially, these two screws here. One very small, shallow, with a shallow sort of bevel head on, another one a little bit larger, and then this little bracket lifts off. 
that bracket that bracket clamps down the the sort of dock connector cable stop that from pinging up and what we can do then we can lift that up again get in the corner just just lightly touch it in there go too far and you're into knocking sort of pins off and chips off uh, and that should lift up and then that's stuck down with a little bit of adhesive sort of a, a bonding adhesive it's a case of just literally gently running down the underside of the cable with a little, little plastic tool just gently peels the adhesive off and the cable should then then literally just lift up at 90 degrees to the board like so now once that's there we can start thinking about taking the screws out for the the speaker this is the speaker assembly attached to it on the underside is the antenna cable so we're going to take out these screws um, put that in the corresponding little tray there and there's one under here as well that clamps the board and the speaker down we can pop that one off and then we're going to remove this little aerial connector again corner of the little plastic tool not too much sort of pressure under it but it's a case of just literally getting under there it's quite hard to do with a camera in your in your way and it's a case of lifting that little connector up. If I lift it up, you might be able to see that a bit better and I could get it to it, it'd be easier. It's a case of lifting that connector up. There we go. And again, it exposes that little circular connector, both very sort of sensitive. You don't want to end up peening that over, you'll never get it back on. So that's the, uh, that's this assembly sort of pretty much disconnected. We can't take it out until the board's loose, so we'll carry on taking the board out. Uh, next little thing is, there's a screw on the board here uh, covered by a little sort of white dot which is the the water detector so we can lift the little white dot out of the way put it back you know, just sort of dab it down there it's a bit sticky and then we can remove that crosshead screw there that screw comes out we put it over there to keep it separate um, and the next thing we're into is this black bracket at the top of the phone here and there's a, a sort of myriad of screws here all different sizes uh, to remove that now some people say that's a retaining bracket, some people say that's the actual Wi-Fi antenna and uh, I'm inclined to agree with the fact that it is it's part of the Wi-Fi antenna if you look at the sort of gubbins underneath it. So we're going to pop these screws out, there's one there, there's a really long screw at the top here. So we're going to undo that. Again these trays are brilliant, uh, just, just keeping them separate. That long screw comes out with a little pair of tweezers, drops into there. Um, really small, really shallow screws, this one here. That comes out just gets to one side. You've got a screw that goes through the board there in that corner, so that comes out. And that can go in that little pocket there, and then a very very shallow screw here. Obviously, sometimes this that was a habit. It's, it's only through a tiny spigot glued to the board, and even undoing it, and un, un, you know, sort of breaks the, the little spigot. Sometimes it's unavoidable. There's not a lot you can do about that. Really small screw there. We can drop that in there. So this bracket is ready to be removed. Um, it hooks, it has a couple of little hooks that hook into the, sort of the bracketry on the main frame there. So we can just get little tweezers, come down the hook and you're looking to pull it down and up and it just comes off nicely. So you pull it down and up and there's your little black bracket, wife air, aerial, whatever you want to call it. It's got little clips and sort of contacts on. So that's that and that exposes all the connectors for the screen, the, head, uh, yeah, the headphone jack the cable for the camera and also the cable for the buttons and everything. So that has got that off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come along and we're going to remove the little vibration module. So if you're replacing the vibration module, you don't even need yeah, I don't even know you don't even need to take the bracket or the battery out. Um, you just look into you can do this with it all in, which is quite handy. Two very different size screws again. Um, you can't get them mixed up. One very long and one very short one. Um, they both lift out and then with a little pair of tweezers you remove the little vibration module and then throw it across the table there. The little vibration module comes out. Uh, one thing to note is if you ever disassemble and reassemble, we've noticed that uh, there's a little bit of clear sticky tape on the inside of this headphone jack. If that comes away, that's enough to stop the little vibrating head from moving. So if you get a vibration issue, it's always worth checking that plastic, the little plastic first. And it's, it's not, it's not essential, so you can snip that off and it will allow it to freely. Also, if you don't centralize that properly, and it can go in at a different angle, centralise it, then sometimes the little vibration head can, can hit against the plastic and, and it won't rotate. So there we go, that's the uh, vibration module. Next thing we're going to do, and obviously a lot of people forget about this when they try and move, remove the board, is the SIM card tray. We're going to remove that now. Obviously if you don't remove this, then the board will go nowhere and you could end up breaking the board if you uh, decide to try and force it out, thinking you've got all the screws. So, here we go. Obviously we've got all the screws out as we go around. Now it's time to release 
all the connections and there's one one sort of turret screw left there again be very careful when releasing these one two three four five connectors um, and we'll also do the camera which is six corner of a little plastic tool be very gentle just try to get the top edge very the minutest edge you can to these and it's just a case of lifting flicking them off being nice and gentle not hooking any chips as you go or anything like that and they, they come off you don't have to force them if you're forcing them then there's something wrong um, you know have a rethink walk away come back if you're losing patience so those and then you come into this one um, that connector there this is the digitizer you're going to look into it just a little bit underneath it again mind the chips underneath maybe put your thumb on the board stop the board from moving and ping that one off and then the LCD screen comes off there as well just lift those out of the way so you can remove the board and then finally you can take the board out with the camera um, but you might as well remove it while it's there and it's a case of getting the whole flat of the tool underneath this connector and again being very gentle and just literally nudging it and the connector pings there we go and that's the camera and again if you're doing the camera change there we go in fact little trick if you're doing the camera change you don't even need to remove those two I know you've got this little leg here that goes under but you can slide that under and then push it in and the same on the way out so little trick try removing that uh, without taking all that off uh, so that's the camera removed um, so there's the camera got replacement the camera. if you need be. Got that little, that little leg out onto the side. That will just slide in there underneath the cables gently and then it sits in, in that little sort of cavity there. And then again the connector just finds its own way, gently touch thinking okay yeah it's found it and then just a little bit of a press down and you get that firm connector click. So there's the camera in as well. Um, once we've got all that in place we can start thinking about the other, the other parts to the uh, the phone and just finally buttoning it up. Right, we're on the home stretch now. The iPhone 4 is coming together. We're looking at putting all the screws and the far, you know, sort of the last, the last final parts in. Um, now, next thing we can do, we can put this cover in that covers all these connectors to make sure they stay home. Um, but first things first, we've got that little castellated screw at the top that can go in. So that goes into that corner there, that holds the top left of the board in and the headphone jack in place and and just uh, just holds it all together and of course that gives us the screw thread for the, the top bracket to go through. Now the top bracket obviously as I was saying before um, you know some people just say it's a, a bracket to hold it down, some other people say it's the Wi-Fi connector and you know it's the old Wi-Fi aerial. I actually think that it uh, it is the old Wi-Fi aerial um, this by the what, what it you know the little contacts it touches. So as we go on with that, the, the only thing to worry about is these two pieces here. Um, they clip in there and there. So you want to come in from that way and then push it down. Oh, we're we're happy all the connectors are all in place. So it's a case of pushing it down, then in at, in at the top, and there it sits home. Those two little clips are in there. One long screw in the top middle. Obviously with my guides, they're quite lengthy. I try not to cut so that you see all the ins and outs of it. Um, you know, I don't use a phone that just falls apart in your hands that, you know, it's been apart a million times. Um, this has been apart, but not down to that level. So, you know, you see it real time, really. All it takes is patience and, and being a little a bit aware of where it all comes apart. You, you need to get a bit of a tool log organizer um, nice little work surface, bit of light and you must, you know, you've know, you got to try and keep the tabs on where all your screws are coming and going um, because there's so, so, so many different sizes, let me put this down, it might be a bit easier S you know, so many different screws and different sizes that you really need to sort of keep a tab on, on where all they're all going and where they all go to um, what you don't want to be doing is putting sort of too long a screws in too short a holes and they end up punching through the board um, obviously you guys haven't got a camera above you uh, in your face so you can see what you're doing all I say is you know if, if you're finding like you're getting frustrated with it you can't do something um, it's best to, to stop leave it you know ship it back ship it into us ship it to uh, you know a repair site so give us a call up we can advise you um, rather than break it uh, you know you guys have made a, ga a great gallant attempt to actually to get it as far as you have um, you know you're part of the minority part of the minority that will give it a go anyway and you know if you don't try you don't learn anything and um, yeah so you know all else fails get it into us 
Um, but you know, you know, have the confidence. Give it a go. We've got all the parts on our sites. You've got all the tools. You've got all the help you need on our phone numbers. Um, you know, our, our guys, our engineers would advise you happily. Um, and uh, yeah, so and commend you on on being sort of brave enough to to want to do it yourself. It's all about learning. Every day's a school day. Right. So the little vibration uh, module. There's me rambling on. Vibration module drops in that top right corner. And uh, like I was saying before, get the two screws in place sit it down and make sure it's, it's it's in the middle of its orientation before you nip it up uh, the only reason i say that is because if it's if it's if it's tipped to one side you can get that little rotating head sometimes hits against there and, and it just won't vibrate it won't do anything um, so we've got the wi-fi cable in there all the different screws um, the little vibration module uh, next thing down this bottom corner is we're going to put the aero connector now the aero connector again finds its own way roughly um, roughly where it is or where it was but if you're replacing it it might not have the right the bend in the right place but this one in, probably inquires, requires the most patience um, I will make it look easy but I promise you it's not whatever you do do not force it home because if you do it's such a so such a delicate connector that you can peen the edge over on on the either part and it just again I can say it a lot but world of pain um, need a little bit of a kink in that connector make it a little bit shorter and sit it on there and again I don't want to cut from this because I want to show you real time what it takes but these connectors can be sometimes a little bit perilous um, yeah so there you go it's on gave me a nice little firm click and that's your aerial connector so if, if that goes wrong you can't get that on you'll get no service um, which nullifies the fact that why well, you need a phone so that's in there next thing we do we're going to put this connector on now my advice for this connector is don't it's got adhesive all the way under here don't stick it down until you get the connector on so put the connector on first find its home nice little click there as you heard and then press from top to bottom down to the cable and it finds its own way in there perfect um, it's got a little retention bracket on there to stop it from pinging off if you kick your phone around or anything um, this will only go one way like so two different size screws um, you've got a, a tiny beveled screw that sits on the outside there it is just there I mean again the engineering that goes into these phones and these frames are just incredible put it in loosely um, get the bigger screw that goes on inboard sits in there and then just nip them both up there we go nice firm press on there to make sure it's all him one of the last screws to go in is this one here and that's in the side of the board I kept that nice and separate um, and as you'll find on on your iPhone that'll have a little white dot above it a little sort of liquid dot that um, that you can replace in fact I've got it down there red on one side white on the other and obviously if it gets wet it's like litmus paper um, the white just turns red and they know that your iPhone's got a bit damp um, you know it's not necessary but I'll put that back on there just to show where it goes there we go push it down there you have it so we're nearly there now um, last few screws the sim dock can obviously be replaced back in there simply slides in clicks in uh, the battery adhesive strip as we said earlier it's easy to take that off instead of have it flapping while you're trying to repair it just sits it in and then you just push it down either end there on its adhesive last but not least and this is the, the one thing that most people get wrong is this little retaining clip there um, has to go in before the battery a lot of people put it in after the battery it goes in first and it sits in and what it is the little uh, the little rubber blob sits above the aerial and the, uh, the aerial plug to hold it down because if that pings off you lose service so that goes in there hold that down with your finger get the battery connector and then come in with your thumb locate it push it down with a nice little click put the screw in you can let go now put the screw in place there we go down on the battery and then you can just literally push the battery in the, the cable folds and drops down cuts up comes down and comes back up again takes the slack off and then the battery sits in there nicely with that tab uh, last thing last but not least obviously we've got our rear casing it's just worth giving it a rub and like I said when you repair these when you fit your new casings or your new covers your new screens 
always check on the uh, sort of the, the back and the front for any any clear. They'll always they'll, you know they'll tend to be a clear patch over there to stop you you know like a dust free cover on the back of the lens as well as the front of the lens, um, and there'll probably be a clear cover that goes over this little graphite um, strip as well. Okay, we'll peel all that off. Um, as well as obviously on the on the other side, but yeah, the final thing is just to give it a wipe, make sure there's no dust in the camera lens, uh, give it a blowout, and um, yeah, so the rear the rear cover goes in pretty much where it where it sets off, with a two inch gap or two, two inch two millimeter gap there. Um, it sits down, you can see it's flush and it's sat into the phone, and then all you do is just you just push it down, push push it down, put down downward force there, and then slide it back. And what you'll see then is that the uh, the rear casings actually slid down towards the phone. Uh, last but not least, obviously the two screws in the bottom, um, and we can put those in Phillips or Torx, depending on on what sort of screws you've got. Uh, one last thing I'll see is as you change the screen, just remember there's a there's a, a clear, um, sometimes coloured backing on the back of the screen as well before you put them in. Um, so remember to take that off because there's not enough space for that clear protector, and you end up with a marked screen on the back. Um, but yeah, just just be aware, and uh, yeah, so you have it. So once we built, rebuilt the iPhone 4, um, I don't know if it, the uh, give it a bit of a clean, and there we have it. Obviously powered it up, but uh, the battery's it's got no juice in it. Typical, but uh, yeah, so we have a sort of fully disassembled and reassembled iPhone 4. All the buttons work. Um, yeah, there we go. Remember, uh, thanks for watching my guide. Have a good listen to it. Um, it's too late now, you probably already have, but uh, yeah, take heed. Take uh, all the little bits of knowledge that other people don't tell you that I've dropped in there. Um, and also all the tools, things like the ice SMO tools, the, all the screwdriver sets, the tweezers, um, you know, all available on our site. Uh, you know, you can't beat these tools and the, the ice SMO is just one of the best. So yeah, all, all the tools, all the parts, all of the knowledge and all the help on our website. So I'm Neil Barker and uh, thanks for watching this rather lengthy iPhone 4 uh, repair guide.